Good afternoon, and thank you for joining the inaugural From Paws to Claws Alumni Speakers Visionary 2020 Series. We wish to extend a heartfelt welcome to our first time participants. If you're returning, we are equally welcome you back. Your Office of Alumni Relations appreciates each of you. Today, we will have another moment of hearing and receiving knowledge from this week's alumni panelists. The alumni will expound on pertinent topics that will support our students, recent graduates, as well as alumni who are seeking career change. And we are grateful to each individual, individual who wishes to lean support to this series. As always, we wish to thank the alumni panelists, especially those presenting today, and those who have participated in the last six months. We did not seek you out, yet you came running with the spirit of a mighty panther, which we are, sharing your knowledge base when the call to participate went forth. The web, this webinar is our newest series from, from Paws to Claws, and we are still dedicating it to the perfect vision class of 2020 as they exercise their ability to be visionaries. Let me share a tad bit of history on the Office of Alumni Relations signature event. The Alumni Student Networking event was originally designed in 2008 when Kareem Taylor, class of 2010, in his sophomore year expressed that students should be engaged and learn from alumni of our one exceptional university. Over the years, we continuously call on members of the alumni community to embrace our alumni waiting who are commonly known as students. We encircle them until they become a member of our alma mater. As Panther clubs, they develop their through discovery, academically, socially, and spiritually, finding their way as their paws grow claws and become fully entrenched felines of service locally, nationally, and globally, while remembering to provide financial support to the institution that placed them on their path of well-rounded citizens. There is so much more to the program and events. Please feel free to read the entire historical review in the alumni section on the CAU website. As we begin our exchange on this day, I would like to express thanks to my colleague, Chastity B. Evans, class of 2010, who serves as the program manager in the Office of Alumni Relations. She will be your host for she created this space for our interaction. Chastity, it is now time for you to begin our conversation. Thank you so much, alumna Gaylenny Gatewood Joshua, for that treasure introduction and credible context. Welcome, everyone. Thank you all for joining your Office of Alumni Relations for the Vision 2020 series, Avoiding the Seven Deadly Sins of LinkedIn. An exceptional thank you to alumna Dr. Michelle Rhodes, Program Specialist for the Office of Online Learning and Continuing Education for being the technical guru behind all of our OIR's webinars. Are you ready for a career change, but not sure where to start? Taking this lunch break with your Office of Alumni Relations will allow you to explore the most of your resume, LinkedIn profile, interviews, and more. LinkedIn continues to evolve as a professional networking and personal branding tool. Today, it's often the first place recruiters go to search for talent or learn more about potential job candidates. This session will challenge you to review and update your LinkedIn profile, focusing on seven crucial areas. Just a little housekeeping for today. Before we get started, if you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the Q&A box in your Zoom control panel. I'll be sure to bring them up during our Q&A session to discuss. Now, without further ado, introducing our first panelist for this afternoon, Andrea Henderson. 
Andrea Henderson has over 20 years of experience as an international human resources professional working with domestic and global organizations, large and small, to maximize their investment and talent. Mint Green Info was created to provide career education based on her experience working with candidates transitioning from college to career, changing industries, or seeking highly competitive positions with top tier firms. Through Mint Green Info, Andrea also works with small business owners, speakers, authors, and solopreneurs to help their brand themselves on LinkedIn. You can find them on F on Facebook and Instagram at Mint Green Info. Alumna Henderson attained a BS from the Edmund A. Wash School of Foreign Service at Georgetown University, an MA in International Relations from Clark Atlanta University, and an MBA from Columbia's Business School. She has been an adjunct professor at several colleges and is a highly sought after speaker on career and personal branding issues. One fun fact about alumna Henderson, she was the first Miss Graduate student on the CAU Homecoming Court and is a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. How are you doing today, alumna Henderson? And thank you so much for always continuing to serve your alma mater. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm extremely honored to be here and I look forward to what I know is going to be a very engaging conversation. <laughs> well, thank you. We're going to go into your first question for today so we can get to rocking and rolling. Alumna Henderson, do you agree that LinkedIn is an easier avenue to access people we'd like to connect to and conduct business with? But it does not mean that we will always become successful with this tool, especially if we approach the platform incorrectly. Grammar is very important when reaching out to people we'd like to connect with. If we do not take the time to spell check our work, this will say a lot about ourselves to the potential connection. Do you sense this deadly sin will make our message go unanswered or fall on deaf ears? That's a great question, and I would say certainly uh, proofreading your message is important. Um, avoiding gram grammatical errors and typos is important, but what I want people to think of is that it is a, pl a professional platform to connect with people, so the same energy that you would put into writing an email to your boss or to your professor, um, you should put into writing to a connection um, on LinkedIn. Now, I don't want people to be intimidated uh, about that and, and hesitate to connect. Um, you don't have to be an English major, but you want to put some time and effort into it. If you're asking people to join their professional networks, um, you want them to feel like you've put some time and energy into it and you respect, um, you respect that time and energy by, by at least proofreading your uh, message. Exactly. I wholeheartedly agree. I mean, definitely you, you don't want to connect with someone who has, you know, an email full of errors. I mean, even if it's on the go or not, if you really want that connection or that job or that interview, you're going to treat it like you said, just like it's your current boss or, you know, that annual report or something like that. You want it to be flawless. So what about trolling? Absolutely. I mean, it, oh, I'm sorry. Continue. Oh, well, I was agreeing with you and, and just wanted to add that um, when you're connecting on the platform, there's no need to write a dissertation, keep it short and to the point, and that should make it easier. Um, so the message is um, people are people are busy and um, they want you should get directly to the point. You don't need to be worried about being direct. Exactly. Now, what about trolling? I mean, it's perfectly fine to comment on someone else's thread, but Please just make sure, you know, you're not simply using their posts to advertise your own product or service. You know, when people exclusively participate on LinkedIn um, in this way, it becomes obvious, you know, and appears slightly desperate. So should we focus more on adding to the conversation in a relevant way or how should a person appear? Absolutely. The key is that um, 
you want to treat the platform like you would network in person. So the same way you wouldn't walk up to a person um, and say, I need a job, can you hire me? It, you should not um, <clears throat> be so self-serving uh, on LinkedIn. It, it's a community and you want to add value to the community. There is a very well-known marketing uh, personality by the name of uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V for short, and mm -hmm. he has a, uh, a methodology that he calls a $1.80 per day um, process, where if you drop your two cents uh, several times per day, um, then you can quickly build a community and still add value. You can come on, on someone's post to ask a, a thoughtful question. You can um, be supportive. Um, cheerleaders are, are welcome, but don't overdo it. Um, and also um, adding value in terms of additional content is also helpful. Mm -hmm. But what is not helpful is being very self-serving and, 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 and having it be all about you, me, 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 I need a job, I want a connection, I want this, I want that. Um, you know, add some value, pay a compliment, um, applaud people for their ac accomplishments, but don't troll. <laughs> Trolling is knowing, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so some good, important points to take back from Alumna Henderson's uh, conversation today. You know, put the same energy, time and effort that you would into like an everyday conversation like we're having now. You know, don't don't write a dissertation. You know, this is a, a, a platform, a social media platform, and you want to keep it quick and easy to the point because people are busy. But, you know, sometimes people may appreciate that, you know, by you taking the time to be respectful of their time. And treat the platform, um, treat the platform like it is a social media platform, you know, don't go over, you know, with it, you know, don't be so self-serving, add value to it. And um, also check out Gary B, a dollar 80 per day methodology. Cause I'm, I'm definitely going to check that out. I haven't heard that, but I'm going to look into that. So, yes. Thank you so much, alumna Henderson for your astuteness and for the information. And, you know, we'll definitely be sure to provide you with closing remarks because I know there is a lot that we definitely need to learn and understand about LinkedIn. So that's why this will be a three part series, because we want people to, you know, dig deeper into LinkedIn. You know, it's not just a platform that you can go and just put your resume on. You know, it's so much more. And we want people to our people to utilize it correctly. So thank you. If you all have any questions for alumna Henderson, please type them into your Q&A box and your Zoom control panel now, and we'll be sure to get to them during our Q&A session. Thank you again. <laughs> Introducing our next panelist for this afternoon, everyone, is alumnus CJ Mitchell. Alumnus Mitchell is an entrepreneur and product manager with over 10 years of experience building mobile and web applications for enterprise corporations. He has worked in key leadership roles for Dell, Walmart, Career Builder, and Wayfair. As a former product leader to one of the largest recruitment platforms in the world, Career Builder, Alumnus Mitchell has extensive experience in both hiring and recruiting candidates from tech platforms and the tips and tricks to getting noticed. Welcome, Alumnus Mitchell. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. How about yourself and everyone else? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. And thank you so much for um, being a part of our panel today and for always serving your alma mater. Absolutely. So we're going to go ahead and get down to the expert questions. Because, <laughs> I mean, you definitely may be able to teach us a dollar and 80 cents to keep us rolling. <laughs> Absolutely. So what is your time on, uh, I mean, what is your take on being needy? Instead, having a little bit of confidence, as they say, act like you belong at the table. What is a more effective way of building a foundation for a productive business relationship? No first invaders for CAU here. As they say, fake it till you make it. So how can we make it? Um, yeah, I've used I've used LinkedIn in uh, multiple ways for both uh, seeking and, re and receiving investment from investors and connecting with investors into businesses to connecting with recruiters and getting actual jobs. Um, I think I guess the, the 
the trick is to find out what it is your actual goal is. So for example, if you primarily want to use LinkedIn as a networking tool to help get a business off the ground, or like I said, get investors, then the easiest way would be um, something that Jeff Buskane called. He read, he wrote a book called uh, Mastering the VC Game, where he explicitly talks about this. The easiest way to connect with investors and stuff are to connect with other entrepreneurs that they've invested with, um, other CEOs, other CTOs, other entrepreneurs and the other and especially a recent entrepreneur that they invested with because it's a lot easier to get a soft intro um, offline by connecting with somebody online that they just recently funded or they recently connected with and um, it's a similar idea with uh, with recruiters as well um, recruiters are constantly searching they're used to search query to find people so if you make sure that your LinkedIn profile accurately has the right buzzwords, so if you're looking to be a marketer, for example, you need to make sure that your headline says marketer, you have a job title that says something with marketing, market research, or what have you, you need to have specific skill sets around marketing. And when they use those uh, search queries, they will actually search and find you. Most importantly, there's a tab on the um, LinkedIn site where it allows you to set your, prep your job preferences to actively seeking. You need to say you're actively seeking and put in the type of roles or jobs that you're looking for. Recruiters are fine too. Um, it's a lot easier to get people to come to you when they've heard about you through someone else or they find you through a search query. Interesting. Um, and I, I literally just saw that about a couple of months ago that they just added the actively seeking and, or, you know, yep. if you're looking for employment or if you're not looking for employment, how is that going, right. you know, being a recruiter? Yeah, I mean, it, it goes actively well. Like, so for example, for me, um, I I don't even have mine on anymore because when I have like actively seeking on, I'm not even joking. I get I get contacted at least seven to 10 times a week by recruiters for product management roles, senior product, senior leadership roles. Um, like right now I'm in a happy relationship with my job. So I have to kind of put on my wedding ring, if you will, you know, and kind of turn it off. Um, <laughs> right, like like leave me alone, I'm, I'm, I'm together. But um, yeah, but if you but if you if you have it actively seeking, oh, they will they will come find you. They will come seeking you out, um, especially to, especially um, it kicked up big time after uh, the events of the, the George Floyd um, yeah. happening. And mm -hmm. a lot of people started to really understand it and try a lot of companies started trying to make an asserted effort to try to do their part and um, helping to, you know, do social justice and what have you. So I started to get a lot. That's why I turned it off by um, Fortune 500 companies from Facebook to Google to Microsoft to Dell to Nike, like you name it. Like every time I was looking at my LinkedIn, I'm like, oh, wow, like it's another cool company. But I say right now I'm not actively seeking. But, uh, but yeah, if you have that, if you have that on, that's the number one way that they find you, though. Look, let us find that you moved to Oregon to go work for Nike, okay? Nah, 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 nah. nah I'm good. I'm way fair right now. They're treating me fantastic. So I'm good. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, I'm good. And yes, we love. I'm good with fair. Absolutely. Uh, well, do we expect too much today? I mean, no one owes anything your time, you know, therefore we should, I, I feel like as this generation, we have to definitely stop acting like it. You know, there are plenty of people who are willing to help those they don't know, but that number will quickly diminish if we approach someone in a way that shows that we feel entitled to their time or their expertise. So what are some ways to grow you know, this relationship. We want our questions to become the one they answer or they enjoy answering the most that day. So, you know, they'll jump or they'll be like, oh yeah, I remember that person. The next time that we send them an email or, you know, shoot them a message or comment on their post or something. All right. This is a, my number one tip on this. Um, I tend to do my research on people and this is where it gets scary, believe it or not. But if you find people on social media, you will be surprised what you can find out about that person, the information that they will give up publicly. It's public information. They will let you know what shows they watch, what, what dances they go to, what music they listen to, how they feel politically, what sandwiches they eat, the whole nine, right? And most of the times you'll see people's Twitter, Instagram, right on their social media page. Before I contact someone, I will just go and just start browsing recent tweets hey what are you watching oh oh they're a bears fan great i'm a bears fan so now i can just come in and say hey you know i noticed that you were a bears fan and i can just talk to them i can ask them a question about something that they care about right 
people are more likely to respond and they're going to be like, huh, that's weird. Like you asked me about Game of Thrones. Like what, what makes you know what I feel I know about that? And I asked him a Game of Thrones question. And next thing you know, we're talking back and forth. And then now I've been able to build rapport with this person. I, that works incredibly well with, um, with entrepreneurs, especially like successful entrepreneurs, because they're used to talking. They you're like, you can't be a successful entrepreneur with, with being quiet. So they're used to going out and networking and meeting with people. So if you find that one thing that an entrepreneur is interested in and just talk to them about that, especially if it's not their company, they'll be your friend for life. Um, once again, that's another method from Jeff Busgang's um, Mastering the VC Game. Just find a way to connect with people, you know, read their blogs. Just take a second. I'm, I'm telling you, you'll be surprised. That's why personally I had to learn because I was doing it to really be mindful of the things that I post on social media because it gets kind of scary what you can find out about somebody in less than five minutes yeah. just by finding their Twitter and their Instagram. Seriously. And don't let them have that, that premium because then they can really find yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, then, and people connect it. People openly say, yes, my this is my Twitter on their LinkedIn. And you go to their Twitter and it's like, oh, wow, now they're giving me everything. They're giving me their daughters, their family, the dance recitals, everything. Like, wow, okay. <laughs> Now I can ask you about, you know, tap dancing. Like, hey, I'm thinking about putting my son in the tap dancing. I noticed your daughter's in it. And they're going to like, huh? What's a good studio to go to? Um, I live exactly. in the area. Da, da, da. Correct. Correct. There you go. If you don't mind, can you please drop the Jeff Bus Games um, book or either, um, you know, uh, sure. we can definitely look it up. As well as um, a lot of Anderson, please drop the Gary B as well. Because, I mean, that'll be something definitely that we would like to ensure that our attendees take a look at. All right, guys, some quick bars and information to take back from Alumnus Mitchell. You know, definitely find out what your actual goal is. Utilize the right buzzwords to ensure that the recruiters can pick it up when they're searching for things. You know, it's pre pretty much searching for you, you know, because you you need a job or you're looking to change careers or whatever the case may be within your lifestyle. Have specific words that need to be picked up and conduct your, words, your research on people. Public information is free. Is free. There's no, there is no excuse. If you look on my Instagram, you can see that I love good old Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Clark Atlanta University, UGA, Pike County, Georgia. Yes, I am a country girl and I love being in the country. So I have nothing to hide. Check. Thank you, Alumnus Mitchell. You know, it's, it's all, it's all about this boasting today. You know, we, we're, we're doing Absolutely. great. And we're going to have you again because in this three-part series, we definitely got to um, look up some more information and definitely dive deeper into LinkedIn. So if you all have any questions for Alumnus Mitchell, please definitely type them into our Q&A box in the Zoom control panel now. We'll be sure to get to them during our Q&A session. Go Bears! Not really, but go Bears. Um, <laughs> introducing our next panelist for this afternoon is Alum... Oh, where is she? There she is. Hello, alumna Avery Liggins. Hello. Hello. <laughs> alumna Liggins is a graduate of Clark Atlanta University, class of 2013, with a degree in political science. Knowing this was the school for her, Clark Atlanta was the only school she applied to, a decision she has never regretted. During her matriculation at CAU, she served as second attendant to Miss CAU, Miss Pre-Alumni Council, and founded the CAU section of the National Council of Negro Women. She went on to further her education by attending Clark, um, Georgia State University, earning a Master's of Public Administration. Currently, alumna Liggins works in the office of Governor Nathan Deal in Georgia. She is the CEO of Black Business. Oh, excuse me, that's not Deal. That is Kemp, Mr. Brian Kemp. So um, had to catch myself on that one. Excuse me, Governor Kemp. You know, although you know we like you sometimes. She is the CEO of Black Business Connect, an organization dedicated to assisting Black entrepreneurs to start or grow their business. Alumna Liggins has distinguished herself as a leading organizer and strategist with proven business savvy. Ever the visionary, she endeavors to expand the imprint of the Black dollar, thereby increasing the sustainability of Black businesses. As the first vice president of the Greater Atlanta section of the National Council of Negro Women, she continues her passion for civic engagement and community service. Alumna Liggins credits her success to the instruction received from CAU and loves giving back 
by mentoring students and volunteering on webinar panels at CAU. Welcome, Alumna Liggins. How are you doing today? Well, and yourself and no harm done. I do not work for Governor Kemp, so it is okay. <laughs> all right, all right now. Sounds hey. It's all good. <laughs> You know, we definitely um, appreciate you um, being in those offices, you know, because it's not that many brown faces in those areas. And we appreciate your, your courage and your wisdom and your intellect of definitely showing face. Always so, a pleasure to get back. <laughs> ma yes, ma'am. So we're definitely going to go into your first question for this um, afternoon. Benjamin Harrison, LinkedIn expert and the creative of Smart Pitch. Um, he's an awesome guy. I love him. A program that teaches inventors how to use LinkedIn to submit their ideas for our products coined the term non-consensual submission. In his view, we all think our products and services are the best things since sliced bread. But by shoving our marketing materials down someone's throat rather than asking them for permission first, you are setting the opposite of an advantageous tone. So what do you feel we should do to develop and create a healthy LinkedIn relationship by not being too shovy? I am so glad you asked this question because it is perfect. This actually has happened to me several times this year. And one of the more recent experiences was a few weeks ago, someone reached out to me and um, we didn't really know each other on LinkedIn, but she added me to her email list without my permission. And so when you do that, it comes across as inconsiderate and disrespectful because we really had not had uh, a connection or an introduction. So you want to make sure you're respectful of what you send to them. What is more appropriate is to maybe send something of value to them if you're not going to meet with them in person or you can schedule a business introduction meeting. And even when you schedule that business introduction meeting, that's not the time to pitch your, whether you want a career or whether you want to um, collaborate on services, just ask what can you do to be a benefit to them. So I always like to know what is the brand about, get to know them and know if they need like a client or if they need um, just support and whatever they need. What do they need from me and how can I help them? Interesting. You know, I've actually had that um, situation occur with me as well. And I'm starting to see that not only is it occurring a lot on LinkedIn, but it's also occurring on Facebook and on um, Instagram. Like they're starting to, you know, to get into your inboxes. And when they feel that they have that right to pitch, next thing you know, you're receiving all the spam mail. And it's like, um, I didn't ask for that, or I don't even know you like that to, you know, make this investment or want to invest. So that's, those are very great points that you made. Um, it's okay to get personal at times, you know, but remember, this is a place for business. You're trying to connect with people professionally. So LinkedIn content, especially video, has had amazing reach over the last few years. But just because you can post something doesn't mean you should. LinkedIn is a tool for branding. Tell us about how your company utilizes LinkedIn to create its professional brand. And what are some pros and cons um, Black women models execute in order to you know, ensure that they are taking advantage of their branding? Thank you so much. And I have to definitely echo what CJ said earlier about utilizing those keywords in mm -hmm. my title. And I'm always, always I'm like weary of like what I put out on, um, like on the internet, but LinkedIn is the place to position yourself as the expert. So by my name, I also have brand strategies and then other things that I want to be known for. And without even having to promote myself, there are other things that I do, but right now there are 77 people waiting in my LinkedIn inbox because of those keywords. I'm still just trying to figure out how exactly they found me. And that could either be through the brand strategist keyword, or sometimes I will utilize hashtags because it is technically a social media platform. So whenever I post videos of me speaking or say I'm going to be speaking at this event next week, I make sure that I utilize those hashtags appropriately. And that also shows how well, that I'm an expert in my industry. And actually someone reached out to me maybe like a few weeks ago based off of a post because they hadn't seen me in a while. They're like, oh, hey, there's Avery just because of something I posted. So even if you're approaching it from an employee um, looking for a job, 
it's okay to maybe just post like things that you've done, projects you've worked on and utilize those hashtags. Interesting. I mean, it's now in this, uh, in this world, in this century, in this generation, it is hashtag. It's all about the hashtags. Um, you can like look up stuff from way back when just from searching a hashtag. And I, I, I don't know, but I feel like that is like the best thing since sliced bread because I can definitely see CAU homecomings from all the way back to like 2015, 2014, 2012, whenever hashtags began to become more popular, you know, on certain types of platforms, just by typing that in and just scrolling down and looking at all the images and stuff like that, which is awesome, you know, to a point, you know, depending on what you're looking for. So some things to take back from alumna Liggins is always, you know, ensuring that you utilize those keywords because Keywords are the thing now. It's the new normal. So definitely utilizing those keywords, but utilizing them appropriately. Um, ensuring that you schedule a business meeting first before, you know, just coming into someone's box or adding them to a email uh, merger list or just trying to speak to them about something that they know nothing of. Because, you know, it's all about that introduction. You need to introduce yourself first, not necessarily pitch it, but introduce yourself, you know. And then move in, you know, once you understand and fully understand them and know them. And then last but not least, you know, understanding how your hashtags, and understanding social media and how to utilize them appropriately. And not just not for yourself, but also for your business and for your brand. So awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alumna Liggins, for breaking it down and for bringing your awareness. If you all have any questions for alumna Liggins, please type them into our Q&A box in your Zoom control panel now, and we'll be sure to get to them during our Q&A session. We do apologize, but um, alumnus Bergen will not be able to be with us today. He did end up having a last minute hands on meeting uh, with his VP. So we're hoping some great things uh, do turn out for him in that part. He does work for a career builder. Um, so hopefully he will be on our next webinar and we can definitely see what it is that he would like to offer to the plate um, for CAU. He is a 2011 graduate of Clark Atlanta University and um, we do hate that we missed him, but we know, we, we know that he'll be back. So we're gonna go straight into our Q and A sessions, guys. Um, it looks like we'll get out on time, on time. So. Thank you Can again. I, I see that somebody asked a question. Um, Chastity, do you mind if I uh, give a crack at it? Take a crack oh, at it? Most definitely. Most definitely. Uh, so it looks like uh, somebody asked, what type of advertisement ideas would you recommend to drive traffic to a new, um, since August 2020, for-profit online Metro Atlanta Primary School, short mm -hmm. of the owner com uh, continuing to do online posts and reinvesting website marketing tools? Um, and that's really sort of in my wheelhouse because I do work with small business owners as well. Um, so if I could just throw a few ideas out out there, I would say um, join groups. I would say uh, join groups of maybe Atlanta Metro moms or um, look for groups of um, employee groups of local businesses. So if there's a hospital, uh, or school or something near your daycare, start having conversations with those people because those are the people that are going to patronize your business. And ultimately what you wanna do is build a community. Um, you could even start your own LinkedIn group and provide mm -hmm. useful tips on parenting, on homeschooling, on uh, daycare, um, relevant um, ideas that add value and people will start begin to look at you as the subject matter expert, as the authority and uh, appreciate the information that you share and want to participate in your community. And they'll ultimately look for your business so that they can support it um, and recommend it to others. Nice, nice. Did anyone else uh, want to uh, take a stab at that question before we move forward to the other questions? Yeah, I'll jump in. Um, it's, a, it's a very popular Silicon Valley book. Um, by Gabriel, I forget his last name. I met him. He actually was one of my mentors for one of my companies that that a lot of people use. It's called traction, like how any startup can can gain explosive growth. And what it does is it breaks it, it breaks down all different. There's only 19 ways that anybody can market anything. 
And what that book teaches you is how to figure out what those 19 things are and how to apply it to any particular business idea, whatever it is you want to do. And using today's tools, how you can explicitly create um, objectives and go out and create marketing tests to find out um, what works best for your business, your idea, whatever, from a growth hacking standpoint. It's an excellent book. And I think it's probably be anything you ever need for learning how to market anything. Interesting. What, uh, what would you all say that, um, do you all agree that the premium concept for LinkedIn, is it a yay or is it a nay? And this is a toss up question. I, I can take that one. Um, uh, as a recruiter. Yeah. Oh, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Andrew. Oh, well, from my perspective as, as a recruiter, um, it's, it's not really necessary because on our side, um, we have, we pay to be able to find people whether they have premium or not. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking for certain skill sets and certain um, experiences and, and are able to get, reach deep down into our third level connections and beyond based on that. So it's really not necessary in my opinion to have premium, although if you're doing more outbound marketing and you want a, a campaign or you want more uh, in-mails and things like that, it might be worth it. But um, if you're simply uh, job seeking uh, and you're not doing a lot of outbound messaging, in my personal opinion, um, it's not necessary. What would be better is to spend time um, being uh, connecting with the people who uh, who you want to connect with or wh whose circle you want to be in. I sort of uh, equate it to, and this may be a little um, PG plus <laughs> rated, but if you're, if, you're, if you're going out to the club, um, you don't necessarily want to go up to somebody and say, hey, you know, let's connect. What you might want to do is position yourself in their line of sight and try to catch their attention. And I think it's the same way with job searching. Um, a lot of times you really want to position yourself so that you can be seen um, by the people who you want to see you rather than just going up to them directly and, you know, putting all your stuff out there. That's awesome. And that's an awesome way to think about it too. Like I, you know, PG plus. <laughs> <laughs> I love the degree of that as well. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, along the lines. I would have to agree with that as well because at this point, um, I don't even, I've tried the free, premium free trial. I don't really see a difference. And if, if you have a great LinkedIn strategy, people will find you. I don't even have to actively seek people. That 77 people who are uh, waiting on me to answer them, that's not because I contacted them or, or anything. They found me somehow, whether it was through networking, whether it was again through those strategies that I mentioned earlier. So I don't really see, I don't think I'll be doing it unless you want to see like who that hidden person is who viewed your profile. It's a good, it's a good point. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to probably go out on a limb and I'm going to argue on LinkedIn's behalf and say it is worth it, but it just depends on how you use it. Right. If you're, if you're using it for the explicit purpose to go out and try to specifically contact people through messaging, then yes, that I think that's kind of not the best way to use the premium profile. The best way to use it is for data mining for what recruiters are looking for, because you get access to specific keywords, um, skill sets and titles underneath every single job description, as well as competitive intelligence reports that you do not get with the regular profile. So for example, I'm a product manager. If I want to, and if I want to get hired for a product manager role from Google, I can search Google. I can find director of product management. And the sense when I have a premium profile, I can see the high level skill sets as well as the competitive intelligence reports for what recruiters are actively searching for, for candidates. And then I can go back and I can specifically tailor make my profile so that when recruiters do search for product managers in Atlanta or nationwide, I tend to bubble up to the top. And on top of that, when you are a premium, a premium member for some recruiters profiles, you will automatically pop up to the top um, because you will be shown as a feature candidate, right? It depends on the search query that they specifically have on the back end as well. So there are advantages to helping it get you to what you are, get you to what you want, which is more no, no, notice, but you have to make sure that you're not just paying for the profile and not doing anything with it. You should be actively using the buzzwords and the tags and stuff because all of these search queries 
are all based on like six different meta tags that's being used whenever any recruiter or anyone goes in and searches for a candidate. And if you don't have all six of those meta tags on the back end, then you'll go down, you'll go down the list. It's just like any other search engine. They're going off of what people search and then what people click on after they search. You want to be both of those. Interesting. Ooh, I want to put on my headset and, and, and battle my fellow alumna CJ and say, <laughs> ah. from the other from the other side of that, um, being the, the person that's searching, um, a good recruiter is going to dig. And so we're not going to be tricked by those algorithms. And while LinkedIn may serve people up and say, you know, this is the best match, um, we don't only rely on that. We dig deeper. And, um, and what might be helpful, more helpful than being a featured candidate, is being connected to people in the organization. So if I'm looking for somebody with a product management skill set like yours, CJ, and I see that, um, and I work for Google, and I see that you're connected to several people in the company, um, and those people have, um, you know, positive uh, thoughts about you, is that's probably more profound, uh, more influential than than being a, a featured candidate. Interesting. Hey, I like Let me go get my headset. You're getting it from the recruiter end and from the technical end. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's pretty much all about how it works for you. So, but at least, at least we know. Um, last but not least question, uh, does or should pitching to someone for your product or service right off the bat get you ignored, blocked, or reported as spam? Because I know, you know, in marketing communications, Students are taught to develop the elevator pitch to present to employers on the fly. You know, that's why they call it the elevator pitch. But will it turn off most people and ruin their chances of making a great connection? What is the most effective way to lock in the connection and build that relationship? I'll take that one first. I would say all of the above. It can, it's possible. Some people might not mind, but keep in mind that if it's a CEO or a busy professional, they might receive unwanted emails all of the time. So you want to make sure that you're standing out from the competition. So one thing, hopefully, I know it's we're in a virtual space now, but if you can and start showing up at events that um, the company is putting on, or maybe if there are uh, career networking events that you can put that they have that you can attend, that's always a great start. Or maybe just reaching out to, instead of maybe like the higher up who's the hiring manager, ask someone who works there and say, what is it like to work for this company? Just to get a sense of the company culture and then maybe not necessarily saying you're actively looking for a job, but just to build that connection. And then maybe later down the line, you can uh, work your way up. Interesting. Agree. Oh. And if I can use um, my um, sort of clubbing analogy, um, again, um, for for people who've ever been to a club, can you imagine somebody coming up to you and say, can I get your number? Can I get your number? Hey, can I get your number? I mean, it's it, it, that is the equivalent of that. So before you start asking for the phone number or anything else, you want to build a rapport. Um, and so it's the same way online as in person. And, and, and while people do it and, and sometimes it's successful, um, it's not really the way to build a relationship. Um, and and e going even further, people think about relationship building when they need something, but really you need to build the relationships before you need something, before you need the job, before you ask for the business. So into building the relationships, that way when you do have something to ask for, you have a, a foundation um, on which to base that ask. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you so much. Alumnus uh, Mitchell, did you have anything that you wanted to close out on? No, no, not on that one. I'm good. You good? All right. Yeah. Well, thank you all so much for the questions and the awesome answers. I hope our attendees are definitely listening and tuning in because you all have definitely given us some gems and nuggets on, you know, on the ins from the recruiter side from the entrepreneurial side and from the technical side. So, you know, please tune in for our next um, series of our webinar for um, LinkedIn, which will occur in January. But hold on, hold on. Can, can, I, can I jump in? Because I did see that there was a question put in the chat. I don't know if we want to, yeah. yeah there's one more left. You see it no, on it was, there? Yeah, yeah, it was um, how critical is having, oh, how how having your summary on a LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. 
but I didn't, didn't want to just leave her hanging and then we close out. Um, oh yes, no, no, please, <laughs> by all means. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would, I would for for me once again, I'm I'm big on on search query and once again from the technical side, that's how that's how I think. Um, it's incredibly important because once again the the search query is crawling as many meta tags as you can. So as much information as you can give it that specifically hit certain, bu certain buzzwords based upon those meta tags, that's what's gonna help you pop higher up in any type of search query or any or any list query that comes back. Um, and again, this is why I think it is beneficial sometimes to have those, um, those premium profiles because sometimes you can see um, commonalities in job titles for what job titles are, um, the roles and responsibilities or the job description of a job title. So for example, if you search market researcher or senior marketing manager or something like that, companies tend to use similar buzzwords and the same eight or nine profiles, right? So if you kind of tailor make your summary to hit a lot of those, those buzzwords, it will, hop, it will pop higher up the search query. And just like anything, any other search query, if you're searching YouTube, right? If you search, you know, girl, you know, hula hooping, what's going to come back is the girl that has the most meta tags and is getting clicked on the most. That's what, that's how YouTube is going to help rank it. So the higher, the more you get clicked on, the more likely you are to get whatever it is that you want from a recruiter. So you want to try to use as much data as you can in your profile. That's my hot take, at least. That, that is well, a great thing on that. Oh, go ahead. You go. <laughs> uh, well, I was going to say, you know, that is so great to see from the, from the data perspective. Um, from my perspective on the, on the other end, I, I'm, I'm looking for certain things and just like with resumes, I'm scrolling through quickly. So um, I need something that's going to grab my attention and make me stop and say, oh yeah, I, I, I need to look at this. And if you all don't mind, it, is it possible for me to share my screen for two seconds? Would it be uh, possible? That would be a question for uh, Dr. alumna, Dr. Rhodes. <laughs> Dr. Rose, let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. It's done. She can share. Okay, right. thank you. I'm sorry to throw a throw a monkey wrench in, but I just wanted to share my LinkedIn profile to give you an example. Um, what I think is really important, and it's very underutilized by a lot of people, is this real estate right here, which is the header. So many people have the standard blue um, space dots. Um, <laughs> looks like a galaxy, but what you can really do is send both uh, overt and subliminal messages by by utilizing this real estate right here. So your summary is important. I agree with CJ 100%, but also this real estate to, to communicate. Um, now I have a word cloud, so that's words, but you can, you can look at what, uh, let me just show you Oprah Winfrey's um, uh, well, that's not it, sorry. Let me just see if I can pull it up really quick. Uh, her background pictures, oh, no, this is not the right Oprah because this is the standard picture. Um, but um, let's see if we can find Bill Gates. I know he has a good one. Uh, Bill Gates. Is it the top one? Yeah, the top. Oh. Okay, I'm sorry. The pressure is getting to me. <laughs> So what Bill Gates is communicating in pictures is that he's a humanitarian and these are the projects that he um, invests in. So if you don't get that from the summary, you can also sort of get it subliminally from the pictures. And some people are visual learners and, 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 they, and they collect messages visually and some people are, um, you know, get it from the, from the text and you want to basically reinforce your message using both methods. So I, that, I'm going to just stop there. Thank you so much for allowing me to share that. And I'm glad you brought that up. You can actually create that real estate in canva.com. That is my go-to for graphic design. And then you can also do other things as well. And also I would definitely like to echo that the summary is very important. So from an entrepreneurial perspective, I don't talk about myself per se in my summary. I talk about the results that I can give my potential client or customer because it's not about me at the end of the day. They want to know what transformational results can they receive as a result of working with me. So that's where the summary becomes very important. Exactly. I, I agree with that. And on top of that, if there are any students on here today, Canva is F-R-E-E, 
So you can create all you want on there for the free 99. And if you get anything that charges, I'm going to tell you the, the little secret behind that. Just, you know, screenshot. You know. Until you make it. You know, as we go back, make it till you make it now. Because, you know, right now it's all about getting that job. So thank you all so much. I mean, that really was a gem. Just like um, alumna Dyson said really is a gem. Thank you all. And y'all got into that. Y'all did that. Okay. I was I was waiting on you, uh, Alumna Henderson, to pull up mine because I did something kind of similar to that. Okay. And I was like, hey, I was like, and now I'm just starting to get all these Clark Atlanta people. And I was like, okay, CAU. Y'all see me, right? Okay. <laughs> well, um, please, guys, don't forget our last webinar that will take place um, not next Thursday, but November 19th at 6 p.m. That will be our last webinar for this semester. Um, and we're going to kick back up and be innovative and transparent and awesome as ever in January, starting off with our LinkedIn series again and starting off with our other webinars that will be highly important for the month of January. So thank you again to everyone. We appreciate you being here. Special thanks to my colleagues, Senior Director of Alumni Relations, Ms. Galen E. Gatewood Joshua, and Dr. Rose for their stellar service, and to our fantastic panelists for a remarkable job today. Thank you again to our awesome, marvelous attendees for always coming out and showing us love. We cannot have host these or have these webinars without you, and we appreciate you all so much. If you all are not following your Office of Alumni Relations on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or LinkedIn, please do so. It's simple. It's either CAU, Alumni Relations, or Clark Atlanta University, Office of Alumni Relations. Or just hit us up on www.cau.edu backslash alumni, and we are there to serve you always. You all have an awesome day and a great weekend. Thank you for coming and tuning in.